Bible reading is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 6. Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 6. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified and they shall build the old wastes and they shall raise up the former desolation and they shall repair the waste cities the desolation of many generations and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. The caption for this morning meditation <coughs> is uh, really very, very encouraging, very strange. Very new, very peculiar, and I do believe, sincerely believe, this message will be a great blessing to every one of us. And it has been a great blessing to me. The very meditation on this passage was a, a very personal blessing for me. The caption for this morning meditation. Yahweh's work that beautifies him. Yahweh's work that beautifies him. What could that be? We read in verse 3. They that might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. They might be called, it speaks about some people, they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. They are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified or beautified. They will beautify the Lord. Now the Lord will be beautified by these people. What do you mean by trees? The Hebrew word which is translated here trees in Tamil Virutsha. It doesn't speak about ordinary tree. The Hebrew word here used is Ail. A-Y-I-L. Ail. The word ail means strength. Anything strong. It, it doesn't just speak about tree. Because the, it comes planting of the Lord. The translators in their wisdom they put the word trees. But the literal meaning of that word is anything strong is called ail. Anything strong. Anything that is cheap, the head, the strong man, the leader, the strong man. And also the word ail means ram, kada, ram. And also this word ail means Walk. 
ஓக் இன் தமிழ் கருவாலி மரம் ஸ்ட்ராங் So here when the word, when we read the word, a tree of righteousness, it doesn't just speak about a tree, strong, as we say that, Tarsayo, not weak, solid, again the Lord speaks about that. They shall be called, work of righteousness. solid in their righteousness let come what me let come what me peter tomorrow they are going to crucify you so what i'll sleep nothing can assail them paul thomas strong men strong men that makes every child of god strong all again i mention our anna pondraj it is that work that karwali mara till this day is able to travel there's no fear in his 70s with an open heart surgery he is able to travel he carries loads of bible he goes to assam he goes to orissa he, he goes to bihar work the lord is beautifying by these work by these trees of righteousness they are the planting of the lord in his vineyard in his garden The Lord has planted one Pondraj, the Lord has planted one Prami, the Lord has planted one Sundaran, the Lord has planted one Kochikunji, strong people. Let come what me. Kochikunji was a very great preacher in the earlier days. His child died because he became a believer. the traditional churches refused to give a place of burial for that child i understand keeping the dead child in his hands he sang a beautiful song dukkathin paana baathra en kaiyil thandala sandoshama thanaye is a very powerful song in malayalam and also it is sung in tamil Whether they give a place for burial or not, work. My dear brother, my dear sister, the Lord is beautified, glorified by these people. I always talk to you about Brother Jerome Tagaraj. I could say probably he was my mentor. He was working in ICF. His wife was a teacher in Harvard. They are staying in Harvard. He hails from a very strong Lutheran family. His own brother was a bishop or something in a very high position in Lutheran church. He received Jesus Christ, baptized, anointed with the Holy Spirit. Early morning, before he could go to his work, he would preach on the streets. He would, go, he would go back home only late evening. At least every day he will preach in three or four places. Starting with a dawn prayer on the street in the morning. His child, their child died. He went to Lutheran. The Lutheran church said, no, 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 we can't give place. You have left our church, we can't give place. He went to see us at church. They said, no, you are a Lutheran, now you are a Pentecost, how can we give a place for you? There was no burial ground at that time for the Pentecostal people. He was a oak. He was an oak. A strong man. 
working in a good position in icf his wife is a teacher in avidi in the same place he took a kai vandi from a marathotti varaikada he wrapped his child in clothes put on that kai vandi and he was pulling the kai vandi behind him his wife the teacher she was pushing the kai vandi with their child why that happened it's all because they accepted christ she was weeping and weeping and going behind the kai vandi they went totally out of the town they in a unclaimed land with his own hands he was digging a pit buried the child with more vehemence he continued his ministry the very place he buried his child has become a christian uh burial ground today they are works the lord is beautified by them but who are these people who are these people in 70s with an open heart surgery is able to travel the length and breadth who are these people my dear brother my dear sister that was a message today that is a message today for me that was a message last night who are these people so strong in the lord who beautifies the lord only these type of great stalwarts can beautify the lord the lord is glorified in them or the lord is beautified by them the literal meaning is because of these strong people the lord is beautified who are these strong people who are these strong people in verse 1 they are called the meek in verse 1 they are called the broken hearted in verse 1 they are called the captives in verse 1 they are called the chained in verse 2 they were they are struggling with the enemies they are struggling with the enemies and again in verse 2 they were comfortless verse 3 they are mourners in zion there's no beauty they have no joy there was no praising they are with a spirit of heaviness so when you see this strong ones who were they who were they does the bible say they are very physically strong does the bible say they are mentally emotionally strong they are very weak people meek broken hearted mourners chain captives no joy no peace no praising with a spirit of heaviness they become the strong ones the planting of the lord and they beautify they beautify the lord they beautify the lord how did that happen this meek one this weak one this mourner one who was in ashes no joy no peace no gladness how did they become such great people moses he had his own problems aaron had his own problems joshua had his own problems david saul joseph abraham jacob peter paul Bondraj, Rami, Robert. We all got our own. They all got their own problems. 
they all had their own problems but they became strong works how is that possible we'll go to verse 1 these weak ones they may be called trees of righteousness work of righteousness the planting of the lord that the lord might be beautifying how is that possible verse one the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good things unto the meek it is the power of the anoint it is the power of the anoint that is power not in the blood of jesus christ the power in the holy spirit there are two things one is receiving the holy spirit the holy spirit coming upon us receiving the holy spirit yet another thing receiving the power i ask two questions please listen how many of you have received the holy spirit just slip your hands up those who received the holy spirit just slip your hands up okay just keep your hands up please for a sec how many of you can say you have received the power Just think for me. Have you received the power of the Holy Spirit? Are they one and different? How many of you think that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the power? Anybody? When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the power? Okay. In Acts chapter two, verse eight. Acts chapter two, verse uh, Acts chapter one, verse eight. Jesus said when the holy ghost comes upon you when the holy ghost comes upon you you receive power the literal meaning when the holy ghost comes upon you you have received power no that's where we made a big blunder The Bible doesn't say when the Holy Ghost comes upon you you have received power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you Jesus says you receive power you receive power to be my witnesses all those who have got the Holy Ghost I don't say that they have received power Holy Ghost has come upon them but receiving power that's why peter was able to say to the sanhedrin to the priest i am a witness we are the witness that g god raised jesus from the dead let it be known to you this day let it be known to you this day they received power my dear brother my dear sister they became strong works they are not scared they thought they are privileged to go through this path mentally they are prepared they receive power there is power in the holy spirit So when the Holy Spirit preaches good things here we read the Holy Spirit God has anointed me to preach good tidings when the Holy Spirit preaches good things the meek will become an oak the gospel doesn't mean jesus died for you jesus is coming again that's not the end. that's not just the gospel the good things he will not leave me he will not forsake me 
there is a future for me there is a kingdom for me let come what may i am privileged to suffer for his name's sake he will not leave me in lurk he will guide me he will usher me to his kingdom when the holy spirit teaches good things when the holy spirit speaks to us good things how does the holy spirit speak when you meditate when you listen to the word of god when you read the bible when you wait in the presence of god the holy spirit teaches you good things joyous things the more you hear from the holy spirit the more you allow the holy spirit to talk to you more you allow the word of god to talk to you <coughs> your bones are strengthened it is a strength for all your body on nabikella maharoke health to all your body when you allow the holy spirit to talk to you your nerves will be strengthened your digestive system will be strengthened every cell will be strengthened every negative charge will be broken away the holy is speaking to good things man may not speak to good things even play please listen please listen when somebody encourages you speaks the word of encouragement we become strong somebody smiles at you shakes hand and say hello praise the lord you get boost up generally in our tamil if we tell somebody oh you are very alaga irukkeenga romba nalla irukkeengla romba cheerful ah irukkeengla if we say like that as soon as we move they take the sand from our footprint medhi kaale man eduthu sutti poda aarambichiruvan rama paatha na enna solna ayyo ungala paatha paavama irukku romba melinjittingala vaadi paitingala some people are happy like that. but generally <coughs> you encourage each other well then do better i'll help you i am with you you go to that there now be bold these words strengthen those people these words strengthen those people and when these words are spoken by some powerful people some ministers chief minister there is a morning in the house the chief minister himself or herself goes to that house tells those people don't worry the whole government is with you we'll give a job for one of your children we'll help you will be this whole state is with you in this loss the whole family is strengthened with these words when a friend says these words when a powerful man says this word when the head of the state say this word now just imagine if the spirit of the lord can talk to you if you could hear the holy spirit talking to you the very powerful word in the bible if you read carefully to abraham to isaac to jacob to david to uh, isaiah to jeremiah to ezekiel in the new testament to the disciples and also to paul repeatedly god said fear not fear not i am with you fear not i am with you When I was reading the Bible carefully at least seven times the Lord told Paul alone Paul I am with you That's why they became oaks One day I was with a very heavy cart I was with a very heavy heart It was as if the Lord was just standing before me as I am standing before you As if the Lord was standing before me I felt the lord told me four statements 
I am with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will heal you. I was not physically sick. But from mental agony, from that stress, from that depression, I still remember that scene. Very directly to my eyes. It's not that visually I saw God at that time. But I felt very clearly that Jesus was standing before me. Still I remember these four statements. He told me in English. I will not leave you. I will not, I am with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will heal. I will heal you. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we become strong. The meek becomes the work. The Holy Spirit doesn't stop with the preaching. Number two, in the same verse we read, in number two, uh, He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted. The anointing, the word of God, it binds the broken hearted disappointment. The words of some people, they hurt us very badly. We are broken. We are broken inside. Our hearts are broken. Disappointments, discouragements, unexpected events. The words of some hurting words of loved one. My husband has said this. My wife has said this. My own child has said this. I'm unable. If anybody else has said this, it's okay. My son has spoken like this. If my mommy or mom or anybody could have said these things, I don't mind. My husband has said this, that's why I cannot bear. My hearts are broken. The anointing binds the broken heart. How could you become a work? If you don't allow the anointing to heal your broken hearted, you will be sick, you will be depressed. You will have all withdrawn symptoms. You try to go into your shell. You lose everything. Because your hearts are broken. In the ministry your hearts are broken. Everybody will face these type of occasions. I know a young man. He was very successful in his career. Three of his officers, without knowing one to another, in his confidential file, three of his officers wrote, he is an asset to this institution. It's not that one copied a statement from the other. Three of his higher officers, in his confidential file, they wrote the same statement, he is an asset to this institution. The Lord called him for the ministry. He resigned his job. He came to this ministry. Apparently everything was successful. A time came. Saul had an evil eye on David. Both were anointed. Both were kings. This young man understood no more he was needed in that ministry. His heart was broken. His heart was broken. In one inst in a secular institution, he was considered to be an asset. In a sacred institution, probably they thought he was a burden. Had 
not the anointing bound is broken hearted he would have been shattered not one day the lord allowed him to be broke the heart was broken cried in the presence of god one day the lord spoke to him the lord sent his word and healed him in a few hours time or in a few minutes time he became an oak he became an oak he didn't know where to go he didn't know how they could eat he didn't know where they would sleep he became an oak it is the anointing that makes a person a oak he was not broken and shattered His face was not sullen. His wife didn't see him sad. His parents didn't see him sad. His friends didn't see him sad. How that happened? God sent his word and healed him. God sent his word and healed him. What is the word God sent him? Did God tell him that I'll give you a mansion? What's the word God sent him? Go to platform. God didn't say that I'll give a roof over your head. God didn't tell him I'll give a roof over your head. God told the young man, go to platform. But only one thing, God spoke. When God speaks to you, a platform is more comfortable than a mansion. God is telling that I'll give you a big bungalow. Don't worry, I'll give you a bungalow. God said, "I was born in platform. You let your ministry be born in platform." God spoke to him. The very same day he became an oak. You will be broken hearted if God can speak to you. Don't expect God to speak to you what you want. Don't expect God to tell you I'll give you a mansion. No, it's when I God speaks to you. Whatever he would say. When God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit took him to wilderness. The Holy Spirit will take you to wilderness. <coughs> don't think that always he takes you to meadows my dear brother my dear sister how could the meek the broken hearted could become and work the power of the anoint the power of the anointing in verse 1 again he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives to proclaim liberty to the captives the literal meaning is to call out the literal meaning deeper meaning is it is not there it is not possible you are taken into captivity by right reason so jesus our god asks a question When anybody is arrested for a right cause is it possible to have a deliverance is it possible to have a deliverance you are arrested for a right cause it is not possible for you to come out you are you are bound in a situation you are taken into captivity maybe it's your mistake you entangled in a problem maybe you gave surety to somebody that person has hasn't paid the money now you can't escape they are deducting it from your salary you are caught you are captive of that situation you cannot come out till you could pay the last paisa you are given the guarantee 
you have done something against the word of god the word of god says don't stand for guarantee to anybody and you entangle yourself in that problem or maybe in a bad love affair don't ask me a question whether there can be a good love affair you got entangled you are unable to come out even when you want to come out in these days they fear worse things you throw acid on me you'll kill me you'll harm me all these loves are not true loves they're scared got entangled they cannot come out so many situations i can say where you become captive on your own you can't do anything you cannot come out of that situation you got entangled it can be your foolishness also now you come to a situation to reconcile it's my fate nothing more can be done i have invited this నా సంజ తప్పు నా అనుభవించిన ఆగం ఐ కాన్ డూ ఎనీథింగ్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ యూ ద స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ ద లాడ్ ఇస్ స్పీక్ దిస్ ఆర్ నో ఇటింగ్ హెస్ గాట్ ట్రెమెండస్ పవర్ టు కాల్ అవుట్ లిబర్టీ లిబర్టీ ఇస్ నాట్ దేర్ డెలివరెన్స్ ఇస్ నాట్ దేర్ but the anointing has got a great power to call out that liberty to bring you out of that entang- entanglement that captivity my dear brother my dear sister so when you are in captivity you are meek your hearts are broken you resign to your fate i can do nothing about it i have to live this life nothing more i can do you become dwarfed you are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller you are unable to put up your head you don't want to go for weddings you shun away from public appearances you don't go for religious funeral also you don't want to meet anybody you don't have an answer for their questions you are resigning to your fate the word of lord the word of god coming to my mouth you are becoming dwarfed kullama 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 poite irukre the spirit of the lord says god can call out your liberty how many of you believe it lift up your hands and praise god in your family in your work situation all the glory that you had you feel that you are lost they ask a question why why this happened to you why should this happen to you you don't find an answer in this morning the lord says his anointing will bring an emancipation to you his anointing will bring a deliverance to you how can these people become and work they were captives but the anointing made them works the anointing made them works how powerful it is i do believe it's a message to every one of you do you feel that you are meek or that word is a sirumai pattavarga desperate despair the lord is speaking to you are you broken hearted are you in captivity what a powerful passage i read this passage many a time but yesterday's meditation was very powerful i thought every word was for me 
I was just soaked in the presence of God. I wanted to have a breath. I I wanted to have a, a breathing. I just came out to breathe. Oh, what a mighty God he is. What a mighty God he is. They became an oak. Number 4. In the same verse I read to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to the opening of the prison to them that are brown and also this also says to proclaim to call out it is not there to call out the opening of the prison to them that are bound it has got a deeper meaning opening the prison door for us we are bound inside he opened the prison door for paul and silas those who are bound inside i'm not just getting into the historical detail it has got a greater significance it doesn't talk about a literal prison it talks about more figuratively and spiritually this opening speaks about opening of blindness surya shana laka in my spirit i feel the word of god is coming straight to some you are blind surya shana khadir ever your eyes closed for a minute allow the spirit of the lord talk to you you are blind you don't know about your future what will happen next puri shadina mak you are in you are in prison the doors are shut you could not think more than one foot the spirit of the lord is breaking your heart ൂരീശ in your life in your business oh shadira it seems the door is closed in this morning the lord promises you god has sent me to proclaim the opening of the press the anointing came in Ezekiel 37 he opened up the sepulchers he opened up the sepulchers everything is finished no hope bari mouth is shut with a big tombstone who shall roll away the stone fathers no hope no hope the anointing king he proclaims he calls out the opening of the prison to the bonds the dead body it is bound ora shanadin i feel the anointing of the lord of God is sending this word straight to you. one who is kept in the prison one who is grouping in the dark not knowing what the future could hold for you in the name of Jesus I tell you you shall become the work and the Lord will be beautified in you the Lord will be beautified in you you will beautify the Lord your ministry your life your very life will beautify the Lord
In the very first four verse, I see four things what the anointing could do to make us strong ones. Rams, Kadaka, tree of righteousness, planting of the Lord, that could beautify Yahweh. That could beautify Yahweh. Your life will beautify the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll go to quickly verse 2. I'll go quickly to verse 2. It's very powerful. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. <coughs> What's the fifth one? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. It requires an interpretation that you could easily understand. Again, I mean to call out. To call out liberty to the captives. To call out the opening of the prison. And to call out the acceptable year of the law. And the day of the vengeance of our God. What do you mean by call out the acceptable year of the law? <coughs> the acceptable year of the law. The Lord should accept your ministry. The Lord should accept your life. The Lord should accept your business. You should become acceptable to the Lord. Whatever you do, whatever you say, whether it's acceptable to somebody or not, you become acceptable to the Lord. Your life becomes acceptable to the Lord. It's not just a day, a period, a year. A time has come. I promise in the name of Jesus, your life becomes acceptable to the Lord. The literal meaning is for the Lord to show His kindness. The time has come for the Lord to show His mercies upon you. The time has come for the Lord to have His favor upon you. A year of acceptance. A year of favor. A year of kindness. A year of mercies. The Lord accepts you. Accepts you as you are. You are broken hearted. You are meek. You are in captivity. You are blind. You are of no use to the Lord. You are of no use to the Lord. In Nazareth, a poor girl, not in a palace, in a hut, because she is a spout to another carpenter, he is also very poor, utter poor. They didn't even have money to buy a lamb to give sacrifice. They sacrificed only turtle doves. Caught to Pravada Balita. Very poor family. This girl was very poor. The Lord had his favor on her. It's not something of you. Mary. It's not because you are rich. Mary, not because you are very powerful. Mary, not because you are immaculate. Mary, you have found favor in the sight of This is the Lord's message to you. The Lord accepts you. It is to call out. A time of God's acceptance. God's favor. When God shows his favor. And God calls out. His vengeance. What is that vengeance means? He vindicates your cause. He vindicates your cause. He takes vengeance on your behalf. The literal meaning is he shows favor to you and he shows his vengeance to your enemies. You are struggling with your problems, with your enemies, unjustly punished, 
falsely accused totally misunderstood we read in the book of psalms in the assembly of gods in the church of gods god is walking around why to vindicate your cause deva sabhayile devan elundarulina devarile nyayate visarika and all it is not to enquire about your justice there is a translation mistake to vindicate your cause to do justice to you to do justice to you there is no justice now no justice is found no justice is found to do justice to you in your office in your work situation the place where you are living in justice is denied to you in this morning in the assembling of gods in the church of god when we say church of god it means two things one it it is a church that belongs to god another thing is the church where gods assemble we all are gods those who receive the word of god jesus say they are gods the bible says we are gods the children of god sons and daughters of god we are assembled here the lord is in our midst to vindicate your cause to vindicate your cause to do justice for you the time is come fear not the two powerful words i don't have time to explain both number one the year of acceptance the day of vengeance the lord gives you a long period to show his favor to you and the day is come and the day is come the time is come the hour is come the minute is come to vindicate your cause in one place the psalmist says pillar to post i am running pillar to post i am running there is no justice for me pillar to post i am running who will do justice for me when the lord calls out his year of acceptance and the day of vengeance he calls out the time for his favor towards you and the punishment the day for the punishment to those who are against you you will become an work today you could not walk properly you could not put your head properly shame reproach unanswerable questions you are caved in like a turtle a tortoise you want to go into the shell or like a snail you like to cover yourself in a shell the lord says the anointing will call out the year of favor and the day of vengeance favor towards you and vengeance to those who hurt you pray for those who hurt you and also again in verse 2 the sixth blessing verse 2 the sixth blessing the lord says to comfort to comfort all that more to make you strong to make you strong all that more comfort means strong or to come out successfully parcel theerita in the in this morning in the name of jesus i promise in the name of jesus i promise with all humility i tell you it all started about jesus god has sent me to proclaim comfort to all that moon with all humility i tell you the lord has given me this text the lord has sent me to comfort all that moon those who believe clap your hands and worship the lord the lord has sent this message to you the lord has sent his servant of god to comfort all that moon who 
whosoever may be whosoever you may be to make you strong to make you successful all that to more you will become an oak the planting of the lord that could beautify yahweh it's not that you are going to have you are going to be beautiful you are going to beautify yahweh on the cross when we look at him there is no beauty in him there is no beauty in him the world is seeing jesus was crucified on the cross there is no beauty in him. i tell you one truth when the lord sees you are like when the lord sees you are like they would see the beauty of jesus i say one more thing urish nagadi namakara bala i want one full love for this god willing i'll speak on this verse three again today just i read that to you to the meek to the broken hearted to the captives to the blind those who are struggling with their enemies those who are comfortless the lord will make them walk in verse three to appoint unto them that moon in zion urish nadi namak zion is the highest spiritual stand samaria is jacob israel judah jerusalem zion zion daughters of zion sons of zion highest spiritual stand servants of god apostles pastors strong believers times come when they also move. so here we read to appoint unto them that moon in zion i just wanted to know what is meant by that appoint unto them the greek word was very powerful it doesn't have an equivalent in english not in tamil that greek word sorry that hebrew word means to give or uh, to bring in a change in any wise eppadi aagilu eppadi aagilu in any wise to give to bring in to bring in a change to those who mourn in zion in any wise to give somehow he would give what is that he give to them that mourn in zion uh that we read i i can't have time to explain to give unto them beauty for ashes you are in ashes praying praying with tears not a, not a joyful prayer about your daughter about your son about your future about your ministry or something you are in zion you are praying you are fasting and praying you are in ashes the lord promises you beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning because your heart is very heavy you are not applying the oil you are unable even to feel the experience of the holy spirit you don't have the joy of the holy spirit mourning your spirit is in heaviness yes apa but you are in zion you are praying you are fasting crying to the lord yes apa a heaviness in the spirit beauty for ashes the oil of joy in mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness you want to say praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord you force yourself and say praise the lord praise the lord is a power is a power praise the lord praise the lord lord you will not leave me lord lord you will not forsake me praise the lord praise the lord praises are not coming sister 
But the praises are not coming in this morning. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to give somehow in any wise a spirit of praising instead of a spirit of heaviness. The joy of the Holy Spirit then mourning. An oil of anointing that brings joy and happiness in your life. In any wise. Beauty for ashes. Joy for mourning. The garment of praises in the spirit of heaviness. That. So that. Because of the Lord could do these things. Because the Lord could speak good words to the meek. Because the Lord could heal the broken hearted. Because the Lord could set the captives free. Because the Lord could open our eyes of blindness. Because the Lord can open the closed doors for us. Because the Lord could show his favor to us. Because the Lord could make us successful and strong. Because somehow in any wise In the name of Jesus I tell you The purpose with which he sends his word I tell you In any wise The Lord would bring these changes in your life That moan in Zion You know what happened You will be called and woke Clap your hands and worship the Lord Clap your hands and worship the Lord. You will be called and walk a tree of righteousness. A strong man. You will be called a chieftain. You will be called a ram. Not a weak one. You will be called a ram. Kata. Parayadi. A few days back, I saw a beautiful handwork of a varaya. I really wanted to buy that. And I saw that my eyes were, I, I, I don't know, it was a joyful and a type of a, a, a ram. Strong one. He makes your feet like the hind's feet. That you can walk, stand on high places. Some of you might have seen. In my laptop. As a background I had a ramp. Some of it's, it missed. Standing on a small point with no fear, strong. When the anointing could do all these things, you become strong. You become a ram. You become an oak of righteousness, planting of the Lord, and your life beautifies God. When the Lord beautifies your life, what happens? I just read to you verses 4, 5 and 6. And you shall build the old ways. What all the areas it's broken. Your prayer life, your ministry, your testimony, whatever it may be. You shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The destruction of many generations. You'll stand on the truth. You will preach the truth. Whatever is broken in the church, you will be able to build it up. I, can, I don't have time to explain. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. The New Testament, you all are the priests and the kings of the Lord. You shall be Name the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Oh, what a powerful thing. The men shall call you the ministers of God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourselves. 
You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. The Lord will provide all good things for you. I don't have time to explain all these things. When the Lord blesses you, when the anointing sets you free, when you become an oak, a strong tree, a ram, a tree planted by the Lord, you will be called the priests of the Lord, the ministers of God, and the riches of the Gentiles will come to you. One incident comes to my mind, I say this and conclude. I was going to Malaysia many years back. That week I had a very heavy program here. A very heavy program. I was worn out and torn out. When I was rushing to the airport, I was a little late also. Rushing to the airport, the only thought, only when I get into the flight, I can have a small rest. The pastor who is coming there, he is collecting me at the airport, straight to your camp. Straight to your camp. I may not have a time even to dress, change my dress. I have to preach straight in the camp. I was worn out. I got the got through the formalities, went to the waiting lobby, waiting for the boarding. And I was sitting on a chair. The Spirit of the Lord told me, go back. I didn't have, I didn't have strength to walk with my hand luggage. No Lord, but the Spirit of the Lord constrained me to walk. I just walked down. There was a very senior pastor there. He saw me and called me. And he introduced me to one doctor. He was going to America, waiting in the same place. Then the doctor said, no, I know him. He helped my son in the Sunday school. Then only I knew his son was my Sunday school student many years back. So we had a very pleasant talk. A boarding call came. We were walking in. When I was about to board in, the attendants told me to wait aside. My heartbeats were rising up. My heartbeats were rising up. I don't know why. They told me to wait aside. Everybody was checked in. I was waiting. They took my ticket, waved inside to another higher office. Hey, Miss Simon is come. More. Uh, type of a, a, a puzzle, but I don't know why. He's shouting and saying, Simon is car. I don't know what's happening. Every passenger was checked. I was very tired. I was standing out. The last person. The attendant, the flight attendant was uh, scribbling something on a paper. He took that paper and gave it to me. Sir, somebody has bought your first class ticket. Your businessman ticket. You go to your businessman. I could not understand. In the flight, a stranger sitting, not known to me. He saw this pastor introducing me to another man. A servant of God, etc., etc. That stranger, he said, if there is a vacant ticket for businessman class, give that ticket to this man. That's the first. I went, went and sat in the business class. I could not believe it. When we were getting down, I saw that man. He had a small yellow bag. Not a big, uh, stylish cabin bagger and just an yellow bag in his hand. He gave his card and walked away. And the pastor was collecting me out. I told the pastor and showed that hand. 
the pastor was stunned did he meet you i said yes he said he is the richest christian in singapore he is the richest christian in singapore the lord will make the riches of the gentiles flow towards you you need not go after it In the name of Jesus, I tell you, the Lord will make you a strong. Allow to pray. Have your eyes closed. We know this is the message of the Lord. Look into His face. You will be the work of Yahweh, the planting of Yahweh. and your life will beautify you you will become the beauty of jesus you will become the beauty of jesus you will beautify jesus the name of jesus will be glorified through you if you know this is the word of god god, god has spoken just put your right hand on your chest i'm not seeing you i don't want anybody to see anybody but i allow to Unite myself with the Emperor. Just put your right hand on your chest. I am joining you in prayer. Dear Father, You have sent your word. Your anointing is resting upon this place. Lord, that you will make these people strong works. Let the world call these people the tree of righteousness. planting of the lord that the lord himself could be glorified in these people bless every one of them in any wise somehow give to them a point lord a point to them make it come to pass in their life somehow oh lord lord our life should be a life that could bring glory to you that your name could be glorified in your in us world we humble ourselves we give you all honor praise and glory in jesus name we pray ah i mean god bless you yahweh you will be yahweh's work that beautifies him you will be yahweh's work that beautifies him god bless you